um, my perspective, you know, I, I hold these two aspects, I would say, in my practice and my understanding. And, you know, people, I see a lot of chronic illness and people come with like really symptoms so sleep and, you know, brain fog and insomnia and neuroinflammation. And so I'm always kind of looking at the role of the pineal gland. And unfortunately, um, the toxic insults, I would say to the modern terrain that really affect um, are the functioning of the pineal gland that I'm happy to go d- deeper in. And, you know, so I'm looking at it from a lot of those physical aspects. And then I've been on a journey and my patients have taught me and just through my own inner work and self-exploration, looking at this um, esoteric kind of uh, piece of the pineal gland and how, um, you know, I I love studying um, biophysics and the whole electromagnetic energy of the body and how we, you know, really operate um, with fields of information and frequency and how this, um, this radio receiver (laughs) in the middle of our brain really has this opportunity, not only to connect us into our inner world, but also to, as we said, um, pick up information that we're in touch with, with our senses on a regular basis, like light, but also in these deep meditative practices or these um, spiritual practices, um, there are lots of exercises of deepening the connection to the pineal gland and supporting uh, derivatives of melatonin uh, to be produced that really quiet the brain and allow us to connect with the field of information and energy that is continually surrounding us that we only see a small piece of, you know, in our kind of three-dimensional reality. So I'm always, you know, when I think about the pineal gland, I'm holding these two pieces of the puzzle. And of course, I think they interact, um, you know, every day together. 